it's the skin of this robber. And they're like, Buffalo Bill lives in this Westminster <laughs> Abbey. <laughs> Would you rob me? I rob me. I rob me hard. <laughs> Welcome to 500 Open Tabs. I'm Hannah Hillam. And I'm Kava Taharian, and welcome back to the show. We're, we're coming to you uh, freshly showered and yeah. put together because it's hot, and now it's going to be the summertime, so we're going to have to Listen. start recording at like 4 a.m. to avoid sweating to death, although even then there's no guarantees. I am um, so sweaty already. It's, it's I, the morning. I'm sweaty already. You're like a rapper. So, I love it. So, oh my or gosh, poet. look at me. Same thing. I'm a rapper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm Dropping known for my rap. in your words. Yeah. 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 Mountain. Mountain. <laughs> look, I'm proud of my heritage. <laughs> Mountain, Mills. Yes. I just learned from Hannah that people who live in mountainous areas in the United States apparently drop the T's from their words when they speak, like Colorado <laughs> and Utah. Colorado and Utah, yeah. Uh, Those yeah, are the most mountainous areas in the United States I can think of as far as states. I guess I don't remember anything past those mountains on Me the west either. side. But I find myself slipping into the Utah thing where I say, yeah, I live by the mountains. And it's like, oh. Mountains. Wait, what did mountains. you say your dad says? Ayers? Because he doesn't say the T? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> People in Utah will sometimes, instead of wheel, it's will. Like mills well, on will, mills on wheels. I welded it into existent, <laughs> or like existent mildell. Eh, mildell. It, it depends on what <laughs> word you're saying. You can't just drop every t irs. Let's put, let's go fill the irs on my car. Okay, sounds good. Um, wow. Anyway, thank you guys for coming cool. back. <laughs> Episode 23. Episode 23. Shall we just get right into it? Is there anything you wanted to talk about before we uh, started or should we just rock oh, and I just wanted to mention, mention up top the Discord again and the Patreon. Yes. Uh, we have posted some ex an ex some extra content on the Patreon, so you should go check that out. And An extra video. A whole one video oh, that's no. like By one minute. By the time this is out, I'm putting more stuff on there. All right. Oh, okay. Interesting. So, I don't even know about this. I'm waiting with bated breath to see what it is that you're going to contribute. No, you're not. But yeah, that's, news <laughs> that's news to me. That's news to me. That's news to me. That's news to me. Anyway, so here is my ab. Because <laughs> I'm from a mountain. I'm from the mountain. <laughs> I'm from the mountains. And I have not had a mill today. I have not had a mill. I need to eat. <laughs> I have not eaten. But look, that makes my brain two of us. works best when it's stretched to its limit. Meaning like... I don't know if my brain ever works best. No, no. But I'm going to oh, try no. it anyway. <laughs> okay, so we're going to we'll switch it up and you go first this week. Right, because for reasons that you have not yet explained to me. I you haven't done my tab yet. I'm just She's going to be doing it while I tell my, <laughs> I tell you my tab. I completely zoned Hannah, out. Hannah, are you listening? Are you watching? And I just go, okay. yeah. Yeah, totally. I'm definitely paying me attention. Too. Okay, so my tab this week. Uh, so I found this. I shouldn't say I found. So my friend, our friend, Sarah's friend, uh, Michelle, thank you. Shout out to Michelle. She sent Sarah this article. Sarah sent it to me. I read it. I was enamored. Uh, I thought it would be a perfect Whoa. opportunity for us to do this for the show. I knew you would enjoy it. I knew the listeners would enjoy it. But okay, I'll say this up front. The title is very clickbaity, and I was very disappointed with the title of the clickbait article. Oh. However, it did still have elements that I thought were worth exploring and interesting. So I'm going to skip over the title for now. Okay. Um, because it will lead to unrealistic expectations that will not be met. And so I'm just going <laughs> to... I never have that happen. That's true. That seems I... like most of living is having expectations yeah. that are not met. Expectations. Yeah, if you drop every T, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> also, I need to stop saying I'm going to kill you to people. So Why? That's because how TikTok. we talk. No. Because I ick ock. Ick so ock. This is... <laughs> Oh, I love Ikok. <laughs> so this is a story about living life to the most, and it's about a guy. Oh, funny enough, his name is Mark T. Smith, or as they say in the mountains, Mark Smith. <laughs> get it? <laughs> my, oh, I get it. Yeah. And another. I just don't is, like it. <laughs> my dad's name is Mark, so maybe it's him. I don't know. This is your Mills father, Mark Mills. Sorry, Mills. Dad. <laughs> Sorry, Dad. <laughs> Sorry, <He's> Dad. Sorry, Dad. Did it? Did it? Did it? Doink. <laughs> DJ Tanner, okay. DJ Tanner, okay. I'm sorry, everybody, if you haven't checked out of the podcast yet. Why would okay. they? Okay. So 
this story begins with a guy named Mark T. Smith. And okay. Mark is an artist. Specifically, cool. he's a painter. And he's a talented guy. He was born in 1969 and he grew up in Delaware. Nice. And in 1984, he moved to Brooklyn to attend Pratt Institute, which, as you oh, know, is a very good, fancy, famous yeah. school. And um, if you were a painter in 1980s New York, arguably the most important person that was working at that time was probably Jean-Michel Basquiat. Yeah. yeah. Yep, exactly. <laughs> Who Love him. heavily influenced Mark's work. Um, oh, interesting. Okay. Yes, yes. It's very, very prominent in his style. Um, and he doesn't it's, say this anywhere in any of the... Go ahead. You guys don't know who Basquiat, Jean-Michel Basquiat is. Go look him up. Uh, amazing yes. artist. Rest uh, and peace. he will actually anyway. come to play back in this as Ooh, well. So, okay. Yes. So Jean-Michel Basquiat was famously, he's the guy that was like the, the grandfather of the graffiti art movement. He was... Okay. Um, he was homies with uh, uh, Andy Warhol. Warhol, yeah. There's a movie that Julian Schnabel directed about him starring um, Jeffrey Wright as oh. uh, Basquiat. And then David Bowie what? as Warhol, which is cool. Yeah, it came out that in the 90s. makes sense. Yeah. Jeffrey Wright. Love that guy. I'll watch him in anything. Uh, anyway, uh, if you don't, if it's easier for you to watch a movie, that's, that's a good place to start. But amazing work. Uh, it's very bold you know and, and and also so mark smith's work is within that camp so it's very vibrant colors very super graphic and layered like a very bold use of line and okay. um he actually learns it in new york in that time where that style was really becoming popular so he's sort of at the forefront of it cool um, okay a, another person that's working around that time of course is keith herring who I'm sure yep. everyone has seen with, I don't know, they don't call them the stick figures, but like the the 3D figures. They're like the like, doo, 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 you know? Exactly. The, doo, the doo, dancing, doo, 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 the dancing colorful people. The dancing colorful people. Uh, there was all kinds of campaigns in like the New York subways and, and everywhere. It was, it was a very iconic style. Uh, let me show you like one or two of Mark's pieces so you can sort of see. And okay. I want you to, so this is like a little triptych of stuff. I think this is maybe a little bit later, but you can tell the influence here for sure. All right. So why don't you describe to the listeners what you see? Oh, cool. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's pretty wild, right? <laughs> yeah, this is, it's crazy. It's like Technicolor, these triptych of three dudes that like you can see all their insides, like, but it's all like graffiti-esque. Yeah, it's like you can yeah. see their organs, you can see like their yeah. lungs and the esophagus and out coming out of the esophagus is like rays of, I yeah. don't know, explosions like or something. Like yelling. They're cool. Yeah. It looks like it looks like how a panic attack would feel. That's actually a pretty interesting way of describing it. I wouldn't say panic attack. I would say more like uh, after you've had many panic attacks and you're used to them. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's like it's just part for the like. court. This is just yeah, how I wake like, up every day. Oh, my body's insane. I don't know what to do. I'll just yeah. scream. But it feels peaceful. <laughs> I don't it's know how to describe it. Yeah, it's no, it's yeah. weirdly harmonious because like, you know, and that's the thing is like there's a lot of there's it's bold, but it's not overly complicated, even right. though it's super complicated that you can sort of let it wash over you in a really interesting way. It's harmonious chaos, uh, which I'm all harmonious about. Harmonious chaos. Beautiful. I love it. Um, that's one of his pieces. Here's this other crazy big one. I want you to describe this. All right. We decided to start an audio podcast so we can talk about paintings. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, cool. This one looks like, oh, wow. It, it, it kind of has f f vibes of that. Oh, the guy that does the portraits with all the colors. Totally. Uh, <laughs> the you know. guy that does the portraits with the colors. <laughs> he had no hand or his hand stopped working. And so he, Chuck, Chuck, Chuck something. Chuck Jones? Just put me in the bog. No, Chuck not Close? Chuck Jones. No, yes. Chuck Close? Okay, yeah, yeah. Is that the guy? Anyway, that's the color. Oh, these look like jackals. Like jackals in the desert with the sun. And it looks like, again, sound is exploding out of everything. But the sound yeah, is and color. Th th these are not figurative in any way. Like this is not, in terms of what you're describing, like this yeah. is not like a regular painting of what you would no, think in terms of like a landscape. It's like, in, it's insane. It's insane. I don't know how it's to describe beautiful. it. It's beautiful. I really like it. It's yeah. totally out there. It's super colorful. Yeah. So 90s-esque, though. Yeah. So, okay. So to that point, so Mark gets out of art school, and now he's got to find work, and he's painting, and he's trying to make a name for himself in the art scene, and he's trying to get okay. gallery shows. And in 1990, at the age of just 22, he gets his oh. first big break. Wow. And his work, I know, right? Can you believe it? Uh, his work caught the eye of someone at the Walt Disney Company, 
who went oh. on to commission him to create a poster for the nationwide announcement of Disney World's 19th birthday, which I did not realize that it had only opened in 1971. And for whatever reason, I thought it was open like when the Pilgrims came to America or like at least within that was 10 Disneyland. years of it. The Pilgrims yeah. <laughs> opened Disneyland, but, but um, Walt Disney opened D- Disney, Disney World. Well, I don't know. He came over on the Mayflower very famously. He, did. he was there and he was ancient then. It's crazy that he lived to be 700. Anyway. Um, anyway, so I'm going to send you that poster too. So it's basically just like a, hey, happy 19th birthday. Come to Disney World and celebrate with us. And uh, again, it's oh, cool. it, why don't you describe it? it? It's like a almost like a paper cut out funky version of Mickey Mouse uh, with a bunch of candles, birthday candles. And it, mm-hmm. it kind of has like a vibe of like like 90s theme park a little bit or like Nickelodeon. That's exactly right. I mean, yeah, it's literally an announcement for the theme park in oh, the duh. 90s. So spot it, it on. reminds yeah. me of some of the advertising that Great America used to do. It's like that. It's got that like futuristic. Look at us. We're modern. But here's exactly. some wonky art. Yeah. I don't know um, how to describe it. That's, that's as close as I can get. But yeah, Mickey looks dope in this. And I hate Mickey Mouse. Yeah, it's it, it forms a lot of his hallmarks of his style, which, you know, like yeah. I said, sort of like graphic and bold and yeah, um, bright. It's it's bright. It's a very simple palette. It, it lends yeah. itself very well to advertising. And it's it's a little bit. So in this piece, he goes a little bit more, you know, figurative and sort of uh-huh. um, real. I don't want to say realistic, but the, it's a little bit more form based and not uh-huh. so abstract, although he does abstract right. the forms a little bit. Um, and kind of to your point, like it becomes it's very 90s, right? It becomes yeah. very iconic. So uh, real quick, just something about this poster that's really interesting. Um, if you look on the bottom right side of the painting, you can actually see his signature on there. Hey, Yeah. Which, if you know anything about how insane everything at Disney is and how insane, like, the Walt Disney Corporation is, the idea that this man got to paint a poster and then they let him put his giant signature on that painting that was a promotional (laughs) poster for Disney World is, like, I don't know what deal with the devil he made. That's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, That's weird. It's really crazy. didn't know this. (laughs) That seems very Disney. The Disney executives were like, sorry, Michael Eisner was screaming at the top of his lungs and I didn't get to notice that there was a giant signature in the corner. (laughs) We were too busy trying to get the Lion King ready. No, oh, that's right. That's uh, about this time, huh? Actually, no. 1990 would have been uh, Little Mermaid, I think, right? Oh, no. Mermaid came out in 89, right? I Maybe it was 89. It was like Mermaid, Lion- Aladdin, Lion King. Lion King was yeah. 93, 94 or something. I remember I went to Lion King around my fifth birthday, at fifth or sixth birthday, and that would have been 93, but... Okay, so this is before that, yeah. Or no, you're right though, because that would have been in development for a few years. So that was probably. Oh yeah, you're right. We're both right. This is a very important topic that has everything to do with what we're talking about. Uh, Yeah. Anyway, look, dude, nothing matters. (laughs) Just go with it. (laughs) So, this piece uh, ends up becoming. It gets like nationally distributed. They're sending it to everybody, letting it because again, it's an announcement for Walt Disney World. It's a big deal. It's a big place. We're trying to get everybody to come. And uh, it seems to usher in kind of a new era of corporate art. That's and what this is. It feels very corporate. It feels like yeah, proto-corporate. It's exactly right. And and okay. like this is sort of the way that corporate art works and just sort of most corporate things anyway. It's like you'll have something that's kind of interesting and underground and new and hip. Uh-huh. And then you'll have an executive who's maybe a little bit younger, who's tapped into it a little <laughs> bit, like maybe there's one foot in, one foot out. And uh-huh. they want to be cool and like sort of remind themselves that they still have a soul of some sort. And some sort, yeah. They'll be like, we should bring this cool artist into this. And then they apply oh, cool. it to their brand. And then it becomes, <laughs> and then it goes everywhere and suddenly it becomes omnipresent, just everywhere, yeah. everywhere, everywhere. And it blows up. And at this point, so does Mark's career. Oh. And he suddenly 22. launched. Uh, 22 years old he's literally 1990 this is he's riding the wave this guy this guy's life great at 22 i think i had failed my physical science class in college for the third time <laughs> frankly why did you need to take a physical science class to be an i didn't artist? go to just art school i went to like a uh, school that had oh, a good uh, art program ooh, look at me i have a subscription to wired i didn't go to just <laughs> art school i learned bringing things. Up the wired things no no no, no, no. <laughs> here's the thing i failed all the generals i should have gone to art school i would have graduated but I was like, science? I've science. never needed it. Science? I've Certainly never not in this it. podcast. No, except for that one time I had to talk about 
like the bottom organa and that had some the science. Leia organa i remember that yeah. that's the one that we just uh we just uh released yeah it's fresh um, in the mind fresh in the mind. that's why i remember the wired subscription otherwise i would have completely okay. forgotted about everything i was like wow dude you never remember anything except for things to shame me about okay that's mom. our dynamic ma'am <laughs> just kidding mom. sorry ma so he suddenly launched mark t smith has launched into a great space of having corporate clients who are paying him for his take on the material, which in wow. effect, they are his style is the thing that they're commissioning, which we can tell you both, Hannah and I, as a working artist, that yeah. is the dream. Nuts. That's crazy. That, that never happens, or I should yeah. say it rarely happens because it's usually like, can you draw this thing and this stuff? Because they're just trying to use you as an extension of their own hand yeah. to deliver a product. It's very rare that they say, do whatever you want, or like do the thing that you would think would be good for this. Because when you do that, they're like, maybe don't include missing, or what was it that I did? Oh, missing children as part of the joke. I had to change a whole comic around because. Please tell us more. I want to know. I made a joke about missing kids. <laughs> it was like, it was rejected uh, parade floats. And one of them was, <laughs> one of them was just an empty platform that said missing children. <laughs> and they were like, no. <laughs> like, oh, so I changed it to Nickelback. <laughs> And then I got like death threats from Nickelback fans. And I was like, missing children would have been better because they can't threaten me. That's They're gone. <laughs> anyway. Little did you know that Nickelback is a band made up of missing children. They all found each other and found the band. Uh, that's terrible. I don't also know it's why whatever. somebody would hire you to be like, oh, we're going to hire this woman who's got a great sense of humor and then no, put, <laughs> scale back the humor. We're not really into that whole thing. <laughs> well, they were like, it's funny, but. And like, but, oh. but this guy, he gets to do it. And it becomes... As you said earlier, it becomes really sort of the style of the 90s. So I don't – there's not a whole lot written about him. There is some okay. stuff from his website. There's some interviews and there's like a – you know, there, again, he's not somebody who's like super in the press necessarily. Right. So uh, some of this ends up just being my own extrapolation of it. But I, it, it seems like he's somewhat – that's he's somebody that's somewhat on the forefront of this style of the 90s essentially. Okay. And uh, like I said, he's living the dream because of, like I said, uh, deep corporate pockets plus – complete artistic freedom that's a winning combination much like uh -huh. a combination taco bell and kfc <laughs> <laughs> yes except i think it's blasphemous to put kfc in there why you're a kfc because hater i don't hate kfc i just oh you just want taco, taco bell, bell so to be much pure. that i need I it see. to be pure yeah i need my taco bell to be pure <laughs> wow okay uh, i don't want to smell chicken while i'm eating Oh, like fried, fried chicken. Fried chicken specifically, yeah. Anyway, I dragging them through the mud. But yeah, okay, so a call, okay. So <laughs> anyway, so throughout his 20s, Mark thrives. <laughs> he gets more notable patrons, including MTV, Pepsi, Harper Collins, Budweiser, VH1, the New York Knicks, and numerous other Fortune 500 Whoa, companies. Oh, that's like 90s and royalty right there. He, exactly, yeah. This guy, is, he's at the pinnacle of it. And in 1996, he even got his own Absolute Vodka advertising campaign titled Absolute Smith. Whoa. Do you remember Whoa. the Absolute Vodka campaigns? Oh yeah, they used to be in the. Uh, did you forget? Did you did you forget Utney Reader? Utney Reader? Yeah, it's like some. No, I don't know what that is. My parents used to. I don't either, but I remember there was always like Absolute Vodka in there, and I was like loved those ones. They were always cool looking. They were cool looking. They were kind of like the Got Milk uh, advertising campaign, but for alcoholics. Yeah. Um... <laughs> oh whoa. <laughs> And they oh, even named cool. it Absolute Smith after him. Like they, it's it's iconic that if you're in an Absolute Vodka ad and then they use your name as part of it, that's incredible. Yeah, that is awesome. That's like a it's like a vodka bottle and it looks all crazy, insane. I don't <laughs> insane and abstract and kind of cute actually. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, and and by the way, for people listening who are like under I don't know thirty, uh, there used yeah. to be these things called magazines that oh, existed that you. Hannah subscribes to. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I don't want journalism to die. I mean, it's dead. But. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, these these ads were. I I don't even know what happened anymore. I'm like, is Absolute even around anymore? I'm sure it's yeah. still a company. I just mean that like I don't ads. see ads anymore. Like print ads used to be such a huge part of like how yeah. you would see crazy cool design and art and stuff. And I just don't see it anymore. Yeah, it's gone. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's all basically dead. just gone. It's all dead. <laughs> uh. Uh, but it was cool. It was a big deal. So this is this is like celebrity status almost. Yeah, uh, almost. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, his ad campaigns are great. He's loving it. And he exhibited his work globally with multiple solo exhibitions in New York City, the Emirates in Los Angeles. And, you know, he's lived this 
charmed life, being the corporate king of the 90s, and in the early aughts, a new chapter beckoned as Mark relocated to Miami, pivoting his focus to explore the realm of personal expression and fine art, and he became a staple in Miami's esteemed art fair week with a successful solo and group exhibition, and he even started doing sculpture, incorporating that into his work. Whoa, nice. And he probably thought, man, my life couldn't possibly even get more awesome, could it? But believe it or not, it could, and it did. Wow, okay, all right. And we come to the point of this tab, which <laughs> okay. is in 2003. He got the most important phone call of his life uh-huh. from the perspective of this podcast and its listeners. Okay. So on the line was Yum Brands, who is the parent company of our beloved purveyors of Living Moss. And Whoa. after more than a decade of hard work, Whoa. <laughs> the big oh. boys of Taco Bell came calling. That's where I've seen his stuff. <laughs> yep. Whoa, okay, okay. Yeah. Wait, yep. it was only 2003 that they started doing that look? Like the... Yeah. Oh, okay, so, okay, okay. This is so cool. Okay, about, okay. Yeah, right. So Taco Bell okay. calls him up, and they want to commission Mark for a series of three paintings to be displayed as in-store decor for the new yep. multi-brand stores in the Yum! brand portfolio. <laughs> it was a dream come true for this podcast and it's yeah absolutely if taco bell called me i'd probably die (laughs) explain i I would it's like it's like the ring it's like seven days and then like oh she's already dead i just died on my own they don't have to come back in seven days uh i couldn't find like the proper taco bell corporate version of it but here's the the three paintings that he was commissioned to do and i'm sending them to you Okay. Um, and then we'll get in, we'll unpack them, but why don't yeah. you just tell us what you're. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yes. Oh, these are the ones. Yeah. Do one you of remember them has these? A... Oh, yeah, of course. Do you? Okay, great. I don't remember anything, like you said, like even from last week, what we talked about. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember these really well because I remember it being this strange, like, switchover. So from kind of that old, like, teal and pink look. Yeah. into that suddenly these started showing up, which was way better than like whatever they had before. I don't even remember. I remember thinking, oh, that's interesting. Interesting combination of the teal and pink and then these because my local Taco Bell just changed the teal and pink two years ago. Oh, uh, no, no way. Seriously? Yeah. It was became like Whoa. a tourist attraction. Yeah. So with the one I grew up next to had the whole the whole teal and pink thing and some of this. They had it up until like a few years ago. So that's awesome. Oh, Wow. So one of them, the one I remember the most is this one with like, it looks like Shrek, naked Shrek with like a, <laughs> with like a bell for a head. Uh, yeah. Naked Shrek who had a bell <laughs> dropped on his head going into yeah. Taco Bell to be like, I'm hungry. hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> for a cheesy yeah. gordita crunch. But I can't, can't do Shrek. Sorry. Because he has a bell, He's on, the his bell on his head. It's very, it's, <laughs> it's like a Sisyphusian. <laughs> Oh, why do we have the same ideas? Okay, Brain worms. Uh, anyway. <laughs> so it looks like Naked Shrek with a bell. And he's like, looks like he's like, give me tacos. And it says Taco Bell. And then there's a little guy who looks like a coked out wolf with a clock mm-hmm. on him. Oh, no, a speedometer. <laughs> no, no, no. I think it's a it's a gas level. It's like an gas empty. gauge. Yeah, he's gas on empty. Gauge, yeah. So he's got to go get some Taco Bell. And then there's a butterfly moth man with a moon for a head. And that just says open, open late. <laughs> Unhinged. These are incredible pieces. They're These are amazing. truly insane. Like, wow. So, okay. Originally made with layered paper, crayon, and acrylic paint, uh-huh. the paintings possess the playfulness of his 80s New York City roots, but they also pay homage to American painter Maxfield Parrish, which I thought was oh, insane. Yeah. The guy who does big, beautiful clouds. Yeah. It's so Is I'm that like, who I don't. I don't see the Maxfield Parrish influence necessarily, but I think see. that that's really interesting. That, that That's from him, by the way. That's from Mark C. Smith, where he was like, yeah, I wanted to pay homage to Maxfield Parrish. Oh, wow. Maxfield Parrish, for, for those of you guys who don't know, is like extremely traditional. Yeah, He's this very... turn-of-the-century illustrator who was very, very traditional illustrator, uh, meaning traditional painting, not like this. It's not insane and abstract yeah. like this in any way. No, I can kind of see it because Maxfield, Maxwell, Maxfield, what? Maxfield Parrish. Maxfield. Yeah, he has a very layered 
kind of technicolor look to his things. So like there's mm-hmm. these ones of like it looks like a the Arizona and you can see how they look like they're layered on top of each other. Can like you send me the different one you're looking levels. At? Okay. No, oh, I can totally actually kind of see how he <laughs> I'm immediately viciously angry for no reason. That's that's how we go. I'm so mad right now. <laughs> Nothing works perfectly. <laughs> Keep the anger going, Hannah. Do not let it go. I don't have a choice. Oh yeah, okay. I, I can choice. see what you're saying. Yeah, so kind of the kind palette. Of like, he has these kind of neon, almost neon colors when he uses with he uses with light, so I can see that easily being like a. Yeah. Okay. I could see that. Yeah, that makes sense. You know what you're mean? right. Yeah. No, I do. You're, that's a good point. I have not seen that piece that you just sent, but the Arizona one makes sense. Yeah, that definitely ties okay. into it. Taco Bell gave him plenty of artistic freedom, but there were still a few basic rules that he had to follow. No subliminal images. No. <laughs> this next one, no devil worship. Unfortunately, sorry. Sorry, what? That's in there. <laughs> apparently and <laughs> no displays of carnality carne Except carne asada carne. right he was like carne asada is a lot but not carnality he Look, we are also going to worship t- at the feet of the idol of carne asada all right carne asada worshiping the devil subliminally yeah. there's I- devil if the devil made taco bell then i'm a satanist Ooh, that's a good slogan for their next ad campaign. <laughs> if the devil made Taco Bell, then I'm a Satanist. <laughs> Eat a Taco Bell and worship the devil. And just absolutely be yeah. run through with the fires of hell. <laughs> Again, another great campaign slogan for Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> run through with the fire. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> Hire me. Hire yes, me. Hire, hire us. We can paint the new paintings. He also had to make the work align with what he calls their processed plastic color scheme, which he yeah. said was a challenging palette to work with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the three pieces are called Drive Through Man, Moth Man, and <laughs> Empty. I was right about the Moth Man. Yep. Yep. Dri- hold and on. Drive Through yes. Man, Moth Man, and just Empty. Empty. How did how did they know what I was gonna call my autobiography? <laughs> <laughs> Empty. I don't know. That was a stretch. Uh, also, I'm gonna send you. This is just a little fun, little extra thing that they had, which is you can see his um, his sketch that he did. So you can see like he works it out in black whoa, and white, like just whoa. ink, just to sort of see the placement of everything. Although it's changed it's, a little bit from the final. Yeah, as it usually does. Yeah, so originally he had a bunch of, it looks like bushes in the background, but then he changes it to stars. Yeah, better. Um, better that way. Those aren't bushes, yeah. those are clouds. Oh, I guess they're clouds, yeah. There's no there's no color, so I couldn't tell. But yes, you're right. Oh, I guess they're, <laughs> they, you know, they're still there. The clouds are there. I lied. Yeah, yeah. I like the idea he, of flying bushes. <laughs> Speaking of satanic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then there's this other one. This is the Shrek one. Which again, if you if you guys are listening to this, we recommend you watch this on YouTube because you can actually see all these images. Uh, But you can see him again working all out, working out all the graphic shapes and placement and composition before he goes into the painting. And it's I love his really cool. Yeah, it's really interesting. He's like classic, like cartoonist. Kind of reminds me of like yeah, SpongeBob esque. It's fully insane. Oh yeah, like it looks like there's like a tic tac toe happening in the middle of this Shrek creature's chest. Shrek's heart is a tic-tac-toe board. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So <laughs> cool. From the article, I'm gonna I'm gonna quote this one part. Uh, it says, "Drive through man is dotted with gray cars that pass through a bell-shaped icon and emerge as vibrant hot rods. Mothman <laughs> quite literally represents what it feels like to be a drunk moth aimlessly floating towards Taco Bell's much too accessible flame. And I lastly, love that. <laughs> empty." The one with the distressed looking yellow figure was designed to evoke what it feels like to be struck by hunger pangs and low blood sugar, which is represented by the fuel gauge above his head. The bell floating <laughs> above him is also a light bulb, a solution to his problem. You know what? I would, I would, this is my new religion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like this quote that he says. So this is, this is his quote from Mark T. Smith. And he says, I believe that this project was an opportunity to create artwork for an audience as a gateway to other artistic experiences. Every artist has a point of departure, a comic book, movie lyric, riff, novel, but something often contributes to the start of the artistic journey. So basically, man of the people, he's like, you 100%. never know, you could be just eating at Taco Bell and then you're like, holy shit, that painting's awesome. I want to be a painter. And yeah. then you go from there. Oh, I love him. <laughs> I yeah. love that. 
And the final three pieces of artwork were reproduced on stretched canvas for the application to the decor and store. Uh -huh. So it makes it feel like a more proper art piece rather than branded messaging. So it's not just like taped yeah. to the wall. It looks like an actual painting painting, which again, you of course, you said you remember these. Oh yeah. You remember seeing the yeah. actual uh, style yeah. of it. Um, I remember, that's really funny. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, I'll talk, like I said, like the, my, our home, my hometown Taco Bell was wild. They didn't like update, they just added. So there was just like a big mishmash of like different Taco Bell eras. So based on the success of this program, Mark was asked to continue with the Yum marketing team as an art director slash curator, where he selected additional artists to participate across the entire Yum brand portfolio, including a KFC and Long John Silvers. I could not find specifics about this, unfortunately, uh, but I'm sure people listening to the show might be able to help us fill in the gaps. Probably. So this takes us to... The final part, which is that the title of the article is one of the most unusual heists in America seems to be unfolding at Taco Bell. Heists? Heists? Heists. Yes. Like, like bank robbing? Yes. Heist? <laughs> Heist. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. So that title is misleading. Aww. I'll say this up front. That's why I didn't want to say it up front, because then you're going to be like, where's the heist? There's no heist. There's no like no, when you think of a heist, you think of like people sitting in a room and planning yeah. and then they're like, all right, we got a getaway driver here and then we're going to break in at this point. We're going to be like Mission Impossible. Dun, 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 dun. Right. There's uh -huh. masks that people are wearing. There's like fake delivery guys. I've seen way too many movies, but one of them stressed as Shrek with a bell on his head. Shrek yeah. with a bell is coming in to distract the Taco Bell employees so that everybody else yeah. can just steal all the paintings off the wall. Yeah. But it's. That, that's not what this is. It's So basically what happened is back in 2015, yeah. according to an NBC affiliate in Westlake, Ohio, someone made off with one of the canvases sometime between 11 p.m. on a Saturday and 2 a.m. on Sunday. <laughs> Most likely a drunk college kid. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I and would so do that sober. 100%. And the police captain, Guy Turner, says, we're going to search every dorm room and rumpus room in a 10-mile radius and <laughs> round up the usual suspects. What? Oh, get a life. So a couple of other people wrote about it, wrote about like that initial article. So it seems like it's kind of meant to be this like cheeky thing that people are like, oh, there is like a heist of Taco Bell artwork. But it's not like yeah. this like Tom, Thomas Crown affair, or, like that would yeah. be fun in like a cool movie. It's just sort of it like a, a drunk kid stole a painting once. Like, this would be cool. <laughs> Let yeah. me put it on my wall. OK, so it was just one time. So technically, in, as far as like a heist is concerned, it's that one time. But. As you mentioned earlier, you know, these these corporations every I don't know, but I feel like it's 10 or 15 years, maybe they'll do yeah. these big rebrands where they'll just totally, yeah. you know, first they'll do a rebrand of the of the logo and then it'll slowly trickle down and going go into the actual restaurants and then they'll change the color scheme right. and all that stuff. So over the course of the I don't know, past 10 years or so, probably a little bit longer, um, a lot of these stores have been remodeled. And when they yeah. come in and remodel them, they're not like, they're like, oh, whatever, cool. We're just going to tear down this wall and then throw all this crap out. So Aww. a lot of people who worked at the Taco Bells were like, this is awesome. Like this painting is really important and like it matters. It matters, <laughs> so, it matters to me. To me. So some of them, a lot of them were just taking them and just keeping them at home because they're like, oh, this was a cool, awesome painting I had. Some of them took them and then they were like talking about them on Reddit and then throwing them up on like eBay or like Mercari oh. or, and trying to sell them like Craigslist. And uh, they're trying to make a profit off of it if they're able to. So no. uh, just so you can see, uh, where's the link? Ugh, so many tabs open. Where did I have that one? Sorry, <laughs> oh, you I'm gotta do something lost. about that. Uh, where the hell is that one? Oh, no, I'm on the Safari one. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> so many, so let's many tabs. Leave, let's leave this in so they can know exactly what we do when, we, when there's cuts. So just us dig digging around in our tabs. So this one's bullshit, clearly, but okay. somehow this is not the only one that goes for this much. So go ahead and click that one open. It's okay. It's oh. selling all three of them together. Oh, 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 my $30,000. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. What, why? I, I don't it know. Says, I, it says there's been eight views in the last 24 hours. How many of those were you? <laughs> All of them. Oh, uh, yeah. Wow. So they pop up here and there. I, no one's buying them for $10,000. I don't know who's buying no. each painting for $10,000. You can find them on eBay. You can find... I've looked around. There's there's one or two I've found. 
it's some of them are like 300 or like 500 it's possible oh. to get one i don't know how realistic it is i don't know if they're like right. bunk um but they exist and they're still popping up here and there you're not gonna be able to get for no whoever's selling this for ten thousand dollars first of all insane did you not listen to this man's mission statement this is about art for the yeah. people yeah he wanted everyone to access it not just the yeah the, the super rich as Although, Indiana Taco Jones Bell once said, does... this belongs in a museum. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and Taco Bell, uh, go, it's for all classes, all social hierarchies. You could be in the Taco Bell drive-thru and you could see like a really nice car and you could see like right. someone on a bike. And they're, yeah, just, they're, they're, they're enjoying the same food. Enjoying the same food. So really, the people who are selling this for $10,000, disgusting. Anti, it's anti-Taco yeah. Bell. Anti, Yeah. But like anyway, I made, a, uh, I made a taco out of clay. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> I love it. That's actually excellent. Uh, I like it a lot. Oh, thanks. I, uh, I'll i fire it and then color it and give it to you. No, I won't. Oh, all right. <laughs> I'll try if I remember. Yeah. But yeah, this is my my uh, fidget clay and I made a taco. So I think this is a great YouTube new addition. Watch the YouTube to see it. Watch the YouTube. <laughs> you should then you can bid YouTube. on it on eBay for $10,000 starting bid. To, I will sell this to anybody for any price, honestly. Literally anything. <sighs> No, ten thousand dollars is the minimum. So no, we I'm can buy the other painting. You. It kind of looks like it has a hot Thank dog you. inside. Anyway, go on. Hot dog taco. So Mark Mark T. Smith, of course, he doesn't get any of these royalties, but don't worry about him. He did okay, and he continues he to did. do okay. Yeah. Uh, sorry to bore you. Uh, no, he's doing I fine knew it. in his career. I was career. trying to hide the yawn. Look. What are you trying to hide? Run a video podcast, and I can I hear you to... and see you. I just didn't want you to take the yawn personally. You did a terrible job at hiding the yawn. You got to just put a blanket over your head when you yawn and then come back out. <laughs> I don't know why I'm yawning. I'm ha this is like my one of my favorite things you ever talked about. All right. It's, I love it's this. Okay. I understand you hate me and my tab and my ab, uh, my abs. But you only anyway, have one ab? I have a singular ab. That's the only one that I can. Get it together. <laughs> <laughs> get it together. Split them abs. Split them, split them abs. So his career, of course, continued. He did some crazy thing where he like painted PT cruisers. They asked him to Aqua do a Bell. painting for like sorry, Aqua Aqua Bell. Bell. I thought about that in the beginning. <laughs> mm, okay, uh, PT, cru he, he, Wait. PT cruisers. He did like he painted something for the Olympics in two thousand eight. In two thousand eight was when they were in China, I believe, right? Uh, so I don't know. I think it was two thousand eight. He the, some crazy like dragon painting that he did, but he's he's fine. Yeah. He's doing okay. Uh, they interviewed him about this and he's like, he's basically just like, dude, I can't believe that people are so excited. That's awesome. Like, yeah. that's great. Like, he's totally just like a mensch about it. He loves it. He's not like, they're, st they're taking my, he's not like Lars being like, they're stealing my property and Napster is taking money away from me and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, although I would understand if he felt that way, but. Eh. I would understand. But it's, I mean, you sign, if anything. So anyway, so this isn't really. So I'll end with this. So it's not really like a, a heist, number one. Also, in terms of ownership, I'm assuming that they bought him outright. So technically, he wouldn't even own them. Taco Bell would own them. But also, if Taco right. Bell's throwing them all away, you're just dumpster diving is all you're yeah. doing. And there's you no law against that as far as I can tell. Yeah. So it's not stolen. I think in the one no. case of that one time where like the college kid took out of the restaurant is like one thing that has sort of been memed about now. But yeah, but. Well, it's, you know what it's we like could finding do? what's that we could make it a heist we could if we could find a museum that had them and then we could break in and do it true uh i actually thought it would be fun if we ever had an office if we ever if this well, podcast ever becomes anything is that we should figure out a way to buy <laughs> these and then have that be the first piece of real art that we buy for the 100%. office. hundred percent if anybody works at Taco Bell or somehow has one of these, uh, I don't know. We could do a trade. Let us know. Reach out to us. We can I'll give you a, a clay taco your... that Hannah yeah, made during look this. Look at it. Fair trade taco trade. Look. A taco for a taco. Taco for a taco. Taco for a Shrek. Um, also, uh, I'll say this because we're in the modern era. It's interesting <laughs> that he's inspired by you know a very famous 80s black painter. Basquiat, in the New York yeah. scene, Basquiat. And then also, he doesn't say Keith Haring, but I'm like, I see Keith Haring in this as well. Right? 100%. Yeah. Um, so very famous queer painter back in the day. Uh -huh. And it, it's interesting that it got, and I don't know what to make of this, but I just think it's interesting yeah. that like a very famous style of like black and queer goes through the corporate machine and then comes out in Mexican food. Right. <laughs> like right? 20 years later. It's so strange. It, and it's like, that's the thing. Like Basquiat, Basquiat was queer too. And so it was like, 
Oh, that's right. Ro- yeah, rooted in that whole scene. And now it's Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, like, it, it got kind of funneled into, like, the, like, through a white, is, a, is like, a white capitalist lens. And now yeah. we eat tacos and look at it. I don't know how Which to feel is kind about of, that. Kind of weird. Yeah. Kind of insane. Yeah. It's conflicting, but. And he, gotta Harry, give a shout out to where shout Harry out right. And both, you know, died way before their time. Yeah. Oh. Shout out to them, I, actually, I guess. Shout out to those guys. Yeah. So look up look up Basquiat specifically yeah. if you guys don't know about him. Um, He's awesome. I always forget I... that we're old. And so I was like, of course people know Jean Michel Basquiat. And I'm like, oh, yeah, people under 30 probably have never heard of him. No, they should. That's the thing. He's like, yeah. Legend, art, artist legend. If you're in have art you ever school seen or any stuff? creative. Me? Yeah, like in person, I mean. Oh, no, I've never seen it in person. Have you? He had a show at, um, what was it, the Mocha downtown in L.A. Oh, yeah. It, that was one of those shows where I was like, I remember in school just kind of be like, yeah, it's kind of cool, like whatever. And then you, it's one of those where you see Later. it in person. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Or yeah. when you just, you see the scale of it and you see like yeah. the, the sort of, there's a couple of these guys, especially the ones that tend to be more abstract. Yeah. Where it, it's not like a thing that you could just see printed in a book. But when you see it's a sort textured. of. It's textured, and when you see a certain style repeated, like consistently yeah. in a palette, like you're, when you're sort of engulfed in the in a certain yeah. style, it's really cool. It be, it, it's like, oh shit! Like, it's really amazing when you see it in person. So if you can see, I if you see know any person nearby museum where you can see Jean Michel Basquiat's work, it's really beautiful. And also, I'll look it up. Shout out to Mark T. Smith. He's he's keeping yeah. that style alive. Love it. Uh, he seems to have been really inspired by it. And as far as I can tell, he's not like not saying that either he's not like oh, i yeah, invented no. this style or anything like that he's giving credit where credit's due also yeah. like when you when you're in an art scene you all kind of not leech but like you all kind of draw from each other without even realizing it like yeah. i've noticed that with like the web comic era like i guess i should say the one I, the my era of like the scene that you're into yeah, yeah we all kind of like okay we all decided it's going to be four panels and we all decided it's going to be this and you know or like yeah. a square, it's all dictated by each other, and we all kind of bleed yeah. into each other in a good Osmosis. way. Osmosis, yeah, os- yeah, yeah, yeah. I just That's thought it was interesting that he was exactly. It's it's cool that he was in that scene in in the eighties in New York yeah. specifically. It's like that's basically as uh, as close to it, short of having Jean Michel Basquiat come and be like, "I'm going to paint the Disney World thing right. now and do it." But anyway, we um, used to be a proper country with beautiful art in our <laughs> Taco Bells, and <laughs> frankly. I'm ashamed of us. <laughs> Only for that, though. Otherwise, I'm really proud of us as a country. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Do I have anything kidding. else to show you? I think I showed I you know. all the pieces. Uh, I, anyway, go look it up. It's cool. Uh, that's basically my tab. loved that. That is... Good. I loved that. Thank you. I want to go get Taco Bell after this to celebrate. By the way, uh, I never wear white t-shirts. And I, this neither. is how goofy I look right now. Is that... What does it say? Season Why are you beef like this? tomatoes because I'm trying to like stretch it out. It just looked like, and it's like how your whole head just like receded into your shoulders. This well, is I not my re- T-shirt. Who's this? It. It's my wife's. Oh, it's Sarah's. Oh my gosh. Which is why Wait, it's let- too small for me. But I thought it was like just you can see the tacos on it. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. Yeah, I've never seen you wear white before. Nice. <laughs> You look like that meme of Adam Driver without a shirt on where he's standing there in the like, Star Wars and it's like super stretched out. Yes, this is definitely not my size, but that's my commitment looks, to the bit. And my commitment to this show is that I will wear my wife's clothing on air so that... This is the second time you've done it. I've done it more than two times. Oh. oh of my wife's clothing, you're saying? Yeah. Or of a theme stuff? What was the no, other thing I wore? Wife. No, no, no. No, no. That, I'm saying that jacket that I wore was one that she oh. made me. I'm wearing literally her oh, t-shirt that her she purchased. Actual- <laughs> Oh, I remember the times when Sean was like, you can't wear my clothes anymore. And I was like, um. <laughs> He's like, they're stretched out right around where the boobs are. I'm like, great, cool. Bummer. Anyway. Anyway, that's my tab. Awesome. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I was really excited to talk to you about Taco Bell and go do a deep uh, dive. I'm literally going to go put a chalupa down my my gullet after this. You know, I, 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 I like had that. this. <laughs> gullet's a good word. It's like a bird. Yeah. It's like, ah. Oh. Like, you could be like Sweet D, who's just I'm eating a, go, like a bird. I'm blah, 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 blah. Gargle that chalupa. <laughs> Speaking. If of, anybody knows Mark T. Smith, please let yeah. him know that we, we salute him. Speaking of heists. Oh. 
I have an actual heist story for you. Oh. <laughs> yeah. When you said heist, yes. I was like, oh. Synchronicity. I love it. Da, 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 da. So I, I wasn't sure if I was going to do this one or not because it's a little bit off. Like it's jumping off of my tab last week about the guy who stole all the crown jewels. Uh, right. Yeah, what was Thomas, his name? Bill Blood? Thomas no, Tom Blood. Blood. Tom Blood. Is... Blood. He's the new Sam Tom... World. <laughs> Tom way better. Blood. Tommy Blood. No, I don't, don't diss Sam World. Come on. It's Look, not better. Can I tell you something? Here's yes. something about Sam Worrell. I was desperate to find out what he looked like because mm -hmm. I'm insane. And so I searched again, censuses and records and wills. I found his will that he left to his son. I found his address. I found his birth. Like, anyway. So he existed, but I couldn't find a picture. Anyway, that's, that's my story. Sam Worrell is real. Worrell. Uh, and, you know, if there's an afterlife, he probably was like, wait, what? Who's looking at my Why stuff? are they talking about me on this podcast me? so much? <laughs> Why do they love me so much? I was horrible. Uh, anyway. Thomas so, Blood. Tom Blood. So while I was walking, so if you don't know, like I was in London a while ago for everybody who doesn't, didn't listen to the last episode. Go, go listen to last week's episode. Hannah yeah, goes into this fun. entire story. And I was It's unhinged. Around. It's great. It is insane. I did yell. I yelled a lot last week. I was laughing I? so hard. I loved it. I loved every second I, of it. I yelled through the whole thing. You always apologize to me. You're like, sorry. And I'm like, why I'm would sorry, I do this sorry. show if I didn't want you to? No, I'm not right now. Later. After after the show, you're like, sorry. I was like a little bit. And I'm like, no, this is this is what, what the people demand. This is what they want. I drop my T's and I apologize. It's my <laughs> culture. You're taking that away from me. <laughs> I'm blood. I was raised to be sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, frankly, yes. Yeah. Sorry, I anyway, derailed you. Continue. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters. Nothing dude. matters. Yeah. Only Taco Bell does. I want Taco Bell. I'm so hungry. I'm so sweaty. <laughs> I want you Taco can, Bell You have a so taco bad. right in front of you. Just eat it. <laughs> Ladies and oh, gentlemen, no. she is by... Oh, she bit into it. I did. <laughs> she ate the clay. <laughs> The like sixth grade Hannah and me that's like do it make a laugh <laughs> made me do that. Impressive. Uh, I'm gonna die young from something like that. Okay, so <laughs> we're, uh, we'll see how much I yell. But so I was so to recap, I was walking around Westminster Abbey area in London because mm -hmm. I wanted to find a plague pit, and I found right. the burial of a guy named Thomas Blood who in the seventh sixteen hundreds stole the crown mm -hmm. jewels in a different heist. And it's a great story. I got reading about Westminster and other like thefts because they were like, okay. yeah, he was he was the first person to steal the crown jewels successfully, except for this other guy. And they, they referenced some other thing. And I was like, well, who's this guy? <laughs> I found myself on a page about London's oldest door. <laughs> <laughs> Riveting. <laughs> no, no. OK, so I see a marker. I open Atlas Obscura, right? Because I'm okay. in the area and I'm like, what other weird stuff is around here? And I see a marker on the map that says London or England's oldest door. And I was like, oh, my, you had me at oldest, which is like, I love knowing all the oldest of everything. Shout out to Jonathan the tortoise. Uh, he's the oldest of his kind. And this is the oldest living door. <laughs> <laughs> the oldest living door in England. And it was. It does it was have insane. Does it have a sternum and ribs that are made of steel? <laughs> no, but it has skin on it, and that's <gasps> true. So oh. I'm reading about this door, and it's like, yeah, they all people say that the legend is is that they took the skin from a convicted burglar and nailed it to the door because that's what they used to do. <laughs> like, stay, like this is what'll happen to you if you yes. rob us. Like, like of, of a, a, a person's house. You. Yeah, no, no, no. Like, so, so Westminster Abbey put this skin on the door oh on the door to, i'm sorry you said it. that that's right yeah so this they found like skin on this door and there was all this like for years and years they're like oh it's it's the skin of this robber and <laughs> they're like buffalo bill lives in this westminster <laughs> abbey he's all <laughs> except he's british <laughs> and like a, a <laughs> monk <laughs> <laughs> would you rob murray or rob murray or rob me hard <laughs> 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 is she well, a great big old plump person? I'm trying to do... I'm like, what would that sound like if he's British? All right. So I'm looking at this door. And I want, I'm like, i got to go see the door. Anyway, it's closed. Buffalo Bill door, uh, right. I wanted the, the door. The door is closed. That's good. The door... want to leave it open. <laughs> Westminster Abbey's closed. Hence, I can't see the door. The door is... 
is from Leave Me Alone. This is like a who's on first bit right now. What's that? Who's on first? You don't yeah. know this bit? I don't know oh anything. Oh, my God. Uh, it's going to take too long. I'll explain Another later. Time. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> I I can't get into the Abbey because it's closed because it's evening. And so I because have to Because the door go... that you're trying to see is closed, right? It's closed, yeah. And so I was like, whose skin is this? I have to find out whose skin this is. <laughs> <laughs> because, come on. <laughs> Give me that skin, you know? Uh, and I find out that, sadly, they tested the skin, and it is cowhide. <laughs> B- bullshit! Yeah. Speaking of we used to be a proper country, they don't even skin humans to put on doors anymore. It's as much of cow substitutes. We have lost, England has lost its culture. They're putting cows on doors. Whatever because happened? Woke. Because woke? Because they can't skin a human because God would be mad. <laughs> You can't put human skin in the church anymore. Like, what? <laughs> you good? Yeah, this is great. <laughs> okay, Just so. Doors with skin on them and British <laughs> Buffalo Bill, and then the who's on first gets too many jokes at once. My head's going to explode. <laughs> I love it. I love it so, so much. Continue, please. I refuse to believe this is cow skin. And so I okay. was like, whose skin is it? And so it is the skin, it, it is said to be the skin of a man called. Richard Pudlicott. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Pudlicott. Dick Pudlicott. Right? <laughs> His friends called him Dick. His name's D- Dick Pudlicott. And Pudlicott. Legend has it that they skinned this dude because of what okay. he did. So <laughs> it was a cat. Pudlicott. Pudlicott. And it's what from... it, okay, real quick. What, what is yeah. the name? Okay, you're saying we're about to explain. Sorry, you. the name Pudlicott. So, Pudlicott. Back in the day, there weren't like last names really until they started right, right. writing it down. And so Richard was from a town called Pudlicott in Oxfordshire, and so he was <laughs> called Richard of Pudlicott, Dick of Pudlicott. Uh, Still doesn't explain the name Pudlicott. <laughs> oh, it's probably cot means like co- like I could go into this. It's an Anglo-Saxon name that. Probably describes what the area looked like. Like a cot. Like a cot. And there was a lot C-O-T- of puddles around it. C-O-T-E probably means like a like an enclosure or like a... Like a if coast? I remember my Cote Anglo-Saxon <laughs> naming. The linguistics tab on the Discord is truly <laughs> upset with you right now for not knowing all of the answers immediately. Dick Puddly Cot walked so that Thomas Blood could run. Okay. This dude... <laughs> there's a lot of words I just said, but they make sense. So... We're going to take Dick Puddlycott and put him over here for a minute, all right? Because we need to get into some, like, history. Okay. I'm going to try to make this easy. Contain what? yourself. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay, so it. here's what the time... I got to paint the scene so that we know how Dick Puddlycott fits in, <laughs> slides in. Paint it like Perhaps. Maxfield Parish. Let's do it. Paint it like, paint it like this other guy. All right. What was his name? <laughs> Mark D. Smith. Mark, Mark Smith. Mark Smith for people in the Mark, mountains. Mark Taco Bell Smith. That is his name. <laughs> we are in 1303. That's okay. how old this is. We're in the 1300s. The king in England is called Edward I or Edward okay. Longshanks because he was so tall. And everyone was like, whoa, he Long should be a king. Shanks. He was six foot two. For, so at the time that was like, oh, God must have made him this way because he's supposed to be king. No one is was that, that tall. Is Longshanks the one that's in Braveheart? That's like tra- yep. that where uh, William that's where Wallace I'm gonna, uh, I was tries to murder. Just about to oh. bring up Braveheart, yeah. So Edward Longshanks slash the Hammer of the Scots is what he became known as. Because yeah, that dude he spent, sucked. He sucked big time, dude. Yeah. This guy, Longshanks this guy, sucks. <laughs> this guy, he was also the one who defeated and drove out the last official prince of Wales who had united Wales as a country. Cruel in the last, and he drove him out, and then he started putting up all these castles in Wales to keep the Welsh, you know, under control. In and these castles, yeah. you can still go to them; they're everywhere. Wales has more castles per square mile than anywhere in the world, and they were a bunch of them were built by Edward because he was like, "No more rising up. I'm busy fe- uh, also fighting the Scottish and the French, so you guys just need to chill." <laughs> anyway, it kind of broke the Welsh's spirit for a while. I can go to that later. The Welsh hated him. The Scottish hated him. Very much so. He, he, oh. So this is around like in the late 1200s. He was like, the Scottish will not stop harassing us. 
because they want their quote unquote land. Or whatever. Independence. Oh, Independence. you guys want to exist without me murdering and what's the thing? Prima nocturna. Taxes. What's what's the term? I forget. Pre- I don't Prima know. Turn over the, 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 where the soldiers would come in and have sex with the wives on the first oh, night of the yeah. marriage. Shit, That's I'm drawing right. a blank on the term. I think it's something like that. Something I forget totally the name of the... I, everything I know about this is from Braveheart. So I don't have... I don't know if any of this is real. A lot of it is, but Braveheart... The William Wallace side of it is... They didn't dress like that at all. <laughs> like I do remember didn't... hearing this, though. Yeah. yeah, that they didn't actually wear kilts at that time or anything. They had but... no kilt. Well, they didn't have any of the like paint or anything. Anyway... At this time, Edward was like, I need to fight the Scots. And so he takes his whole government out of London Mm -hmm. and moves Mm -hmm. it to York so he can be closer to the border. And he's up there trying to quell them. And this dude. It's kind of funny when you say he could be closer to the border. He's just like, I just really wanted to be closer to you guys. I was tired of being so far away. You're haggis. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) So he loved war. So this dude, Edward the Confessor, besides the Scottish story, he was known to be a warrior king. And he would fight in the Holy Holy Land. He could not stop. He was always just like, who's next? Let's do this. And at the expense of the entire kingdom, because war costs money. So he is, Edward is raising taxes. Peasants are pretty much slaves because they can't actually afford. They, all they can do is work to actually have a a home, like a roof over their head. And this is still feudal England. So this is pre-plague when everything kind of got mixed up. Right. And this is still a very rigid social structure. So everyone mm-hmm. had their place and there was no upward or downward movement. Well, there was downward, right. but there was no upward movement. Mm-hmm. So everyone is strapped for cash because Edward is like, you need to pay me taxes so I can keep killing these people. And it pissed everybody off. So he was up there at the border for years and he moved his whole government up there, which is not unusual. They would usually do that. If they were at war, they'd move, they brought, they'd bring their treasury, they'd bring all their cler- clerics and all their assistance and like the whole squad family. if you will whole yeah. squad they'll bring he brings the whole squad up to york in a caravan out of in a car in a one caravan yeah just kidding <laughs> he carries them um anyway so this tall jerk is up there fighting and he leaves london kind of like scarce like he's all there's BRB. nobody really that, no seriously he's like okay we'll have like a like a skeleton government down there and they'll they'll do their kind they'll keep it running i'll take care but of it just put bob in charge yeah, Tom. Tom will take care he, of it. He pretty much was like, yeah, Westminster, just figure it out. I'm going to be up here. And so at the time, London was kind of insane because they were like, <laughs> King's gone. We're going to do whatever we want. Party! <laughs> and, Woo! and yeah, seriously. So it's time for you to set the scene, okay? Okay, I love it. You are a monk. Clearly. In, working in Westminster Abbey, living and working. Do you want to pick a name or can I pick one for you? I just was going to say, speaking of putting Dick to the side, I'm going to be a monk in the down in the in the Abbey now. At this point, yep. Uh, what's my name going to be? I don't <laughs> know. What's one. like an <laughs> I don't know Reginald I... <laughs> Francis? Oh yeah, yeah, Father Reginald. Father, father Reginald. You are Daddy Reginald. Re- Daddy, Daddy Reg. Reg. The monk. <laughs> Daddy Reg. Like, you're like doing monk things all day, which means like chanting and nothing really, yourself yeah, just... and not having sex and you know. Um, the hating yourself. I mean, you should. We're pretty good at that. Like, hating. Yeah. I, I could be a monk. I hate we're myself. We're very monastic in our dedication yeah. to self hatred. Yeah. Uh, so they're just like hanging out. They chant and they do all a bunch of like Catholic stuff. I don't know. They hang out at Westminster Abbey and it's right. This this is this place is like used to be. Now it's central London, but at the time it okay. was like weird, like kind of like a weird suburb, like where you still had to go down a road with nothing around you to get to Westminster. So. Okay. Nowadays, you're just like, here it is. Here's Parliament. Like, oh, shit. Yeah. But this was like its own little like Hamlet. And it was where all of the business was run. So Westminster Palace took care of all the like authority stuff in the kingdom. Okay. And this little skeleton government was there. So you're a monk, right? And you're just chilling and chanting or whatever. Chilling and, and you chanting. think the king is gone. And there's a lot of pubs around here. Oh. And so <laughs> you and all your monk friends start to just get drunk every day. Yeah. Every day, day drinking, partying. Who cares about chanting? Now you're just like smashed in the street, just, you know, laying just in a graveyard, waking up in a graveyard, don't know what, what happened the night before. Wine em, dine em, 69 em. That's what all yep. monks used to say. That's all, that. You know what? I've seen that. <laughs> it's actually written in Westminster Abbey. That's actually what they used to chant specifically. 
Wine them. <laughs> wine them. <laughs> dine them. 69. Dine them. them. And then they're, yeah. And then they just drink. So these, these, these uh, monks were drunk all the time. Uh, no one was watching them. So they were like, well, yeah, cool. Brothels. Let's get drunk. And there was also a bunch of people that were called clerks. So clerks were like people who could yes. read and write. I've seen the Kevin Smith movie. I'm, more, I'm well aware. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> just keep going <laughs> push right through that so clerks would like they could read and write and they were like middle class ish so they were educated and they could do math and so okay. the palace was like we're gonna hire you to take care of all of our affairs yeah and this is where dick pudleycock comes back in because he <laughs> he is working at westminster palace and abbey as a clerk okay and He's doing like writing stuff and taking notes or whatever they do. They just do. They're pretty much a secretary, like a medieval secretary. They're like, oh, look busy. And he's just like, you know, opening up the yeah. same document over and over again. Over and over. Opening writing and closing, the same yeah. old English like text over and over. Yeah. Um, Dick was was restless. He, 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 you know, luckily he wasn't born a peasant. So he was born into the yeoman class, which was that he could kind of go find jobs, figure out a craft, actually have some up, upward mobility. And he was like, I'm sick of being a clerk. I do love getting drunk with, with monks all day, but like, monks, though, I kind of yeah. need to make money. And side note, I used to follow this account on Twitter about clerks mm -hmm. because... Okay. About and it was, uh, clerks from this era. Yes. Yeah. Because okay. um, all the crime reports from then were just about clerks because clerks were oh. insane. They would go were, like... Were clerks the ones that were writing the crime reports too? Probably. <laughs> no, they were just doing like no. official Turns state business. Turns out there was nothing bad happening with clerks, but it was just one clerk was mad at another one, and he was yeah, just like, like, Billy Bob the monk was doing this. I'm going to get that bitch back and then write Billy about Bob him as a clerk. Billy Bob didn't invite me to the pub, and now yeah. I'm going to write about how he defaced the a temple. He's the greatest criminal. Yeah, exactly. But these clerks would get like hammered and just be like, well, let's go ruin stuff. And so there's all these crime reports about these young clerks just wrecking London or like – Throwing someone in the water or like, uh, you know, stealing, stealing Taco a Bell bunch paintings, of, stealing Taco Bell paintings, you know, that's who did it. Exactly. So Dick, Dick was having fun. Yeah. But Dick wanted more money. And I got to just say, Richard, I have to say, Richard. No, I'm just keep, I'm, I'm we're making it through. Privilege. No. Oh, I've lost my <laughs> no, dick privilege. <laughs> just like the monks. Oh, I'm really getting into this. So he decides to go out on his own and try to make some money. And so he decides that it's a good idea to sell cheese as a traveling cheese salesman. Uh, listen, every single person that you would ask, you'd be like, wouldn't you like, what if you're you're on the road? Yeah. You're chilling. You're caught in traffic. Someone shows up with cheese. You can tell me you're not going to buy cheese oh, from a guy it, that yeah. just hangs. It's genius idea. Well, he did it. He would buy cheese and butter from like farmers and be I don't like, know about oh, butter. I, I don't really want that in my car, but cheese, <laughs> well... cheese I can roll with. <laughs> yeah, he would try to sell butter and cheese and uh, like door also, to door. <laughs> I just heard Dick's traveling cheese puddle cock. What was it? Puddle cot. Puddle cot. Puddle, puddle cot Dick's traveling cheese. Dick's traveling cheese and butter. Traveling uh, cheese. So he would bring his cheese wheels around and try to sell them in different <laughs> cities. <laughs> and it wasn't really working because, remember, nobody really had money. Everyone was, like, right. taxed out of their minds, o hating Also everything. getting murdered probably by, like, probably something like that highwaymen Longshanks or something. did, yeah. Or by clerks, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> clerks did murder people. Anyway, so this didn't really pan out for Dick because he was like, yeah, cheese business isn't booming right now. And Should have called so Billy Bob. He would have known. Right. But he was drunk in the pub after chanting. Um, oh, I know what you're talking about. Billy Bob from the first episode. Yeah. Man. He's a cheesemonger. He literally was a cheese distributor. He could have called his friend in New York and he would have sent him low moisture mozzarella. Actually, no, that was at Grande. But yes, I digress. I've uh, I've distracted no, you. And he should have continue. done this. Dick. <laughs> I can't say it. So Dick's like, well, what is booming right now? And he thinks. Murder. The, the one <laughs> That's you. Uh, skinning people so he's like i'm gonna skin everybody <laughs> um he, oh yeah that's like, right i totally forgot this is all yeah, about human remember, flesh this dude's yes. skin might be on a door all right so <laughs> i'm telling you how dick went from a humble cheese salesman to being nailed to a, a wooden door all right mm, okay 
so he's like, I know what's booming. It's the wool business. Because at the time, England was like the biggest exporter of wool in Europe because they had all that land for sheep. And it makes sense. Yeah. So D- Dick's like, I'm going to get into the wool business. So he buys some sheep. He starts to. Easy. Yeah. He, well, he actually was really Grow good them. at it. Okay. Yeah. And he was like, okay, so the, the place to go. So England and Flanders, which is modern day Belgium. Okay. Had like this relationship where they would sell and buy sheep and wool and it was like a good it was like a they both needed each other so it was, it was like a really thing, good yeah yeah and so Trade he's like partners. i gotta go to flanders and and do some wool stuff there i don't know <laughs> what it is Pet sheep very wool comb them or have you ever touched a sheep in real life i probably have i don't remember off the top of my head i haven't seen a sheep you in would. quite some time but i feel like they're i have greasy. touched a sheep they're greasy then maybe i have not they're greasy and they have rectangle eyes and i don't I do I like the rectangle them. eyes. You like that? It's crazy looking because it's like yeah. rectangle eyes inside of uh, uh not sorry, rounded rectangle. Yeah, I did. Dr- I did have this fixation where I was driving a lot, drawing, drawing a lot of weird mm-hmm. sheep faces because oh, they're interesting. really interesting. Like the shapes are. are really interesting. Like the eyeballs yeah. are interesting, and then the way that the kind of curly mane around its face is really interesting, and like yeah. the long snout. Anyway, whatever. That's a... I get why they're like signs of the devil, though, because you look at them, and you're like, hundred mm. <laughs> percent. I don't know about you. <laughs> you got soft, you got soft fur or whatever it is. But anyway, um, so he he heads to Flanders, and he starts selling sheep and wool and and hides at a pretty pretty good rate. He was making okay. enough money to survive. Remember, Edward is still just like. Uh-huh murdering scotsman murdering everybody yeah he's so broke he's so broke he has started taking out loans from other countries banks because people in england are like no we don't have any more money you've taken it all and so flanders was one of those ned flanders was one of those banks hadley ho neighbor you know you want to (laughs) you want some money high rate apr (laughs) yeah seven percent you better pay it back or we're gonna skin you uh Skindly, skindly, windily. I don't know. Skindly, so windily. He so Flanders is like, bro. You have to pay us back. We gave you a bunch of money. <laughs> Just picture Ned Flanders in like a medieval outfit with a giant dong. Of course, a... <laughs> that's canon. I didn't make that up. Does he really? Oh, you're right. Anyway, so <laughs> Edward is like, need more money, more money, more money. And Flanders is like, we're not giving you more money. We're gonna. We need you to pay us back. And so he didn't. He didn't pay them back. And so <laughs> Flanders, like, nope. the government is like, fine, we're going to take all the merchants that live here from England and we're going to take away all their product and we're going to keep them here as collateral oh, until you pay us back. Hostage situation, essentially. So Dick gets arrested by Flanders, like the Whoa. government, and he gets all of his wool taken away and he is livid because yeah. Edward doesn't care. Of course He's not. Like, Why would he? Yeah, whatever. Whatever. Some merchants, like, who cares? Yeah, he's like, I don't give a shit about a bunch of sheep yeah. farmers. They can rot in they can rot in a Belgian prison for all I care. I need to kill this Scotsman. Yeah. Mel Gibson. I need to kill Mel Gibson. <laughs> uh and so Richard is in not Richard. My gosh. Yeah, Richard. Dick is in prison in Belgium and he's just like livid. Because he gave up the clerk job. He gave up the cheese job. He just yeah. wants to make money. And he he's finally just... had some wool. But at that point, <laughs> Edward had taxed the wool industry to like insane like that was untouchable they were like don't talk tax the wool industry that's like our main export he had started doing that and so wool became out- outrageously expensive so mm. that was happening around the same that's time that's like that inflation in and all that stuff yeah. starts happening that's usually when oh, people yeah. get overthrown it's always like whatever that's the what chief export say. yeah it's it, like it uh, wheat to... i think wheat was the so one this that ends happened up recently laying the groundwork the way that edward no yeah edward raises the taxes and stuff on on the wool trade it yeah. lays the groundwork for the peasants re- the peasants revolt about yep. 50 years later that makes understandable sense. because between this and the peasants revolt the black plague happens it completely flattens the social hierarchy yeah and suddenly the king's like but you gotta keep paying me where'd all the peasants go They're and everyone's like no like, we don't <laughs> no we don't <laughs> you better be okay with a parliament now anyway it doesn't matter so that's a whole different tab Dick is like, I don't really know how he gets out of prison, but he somehow gets out of prison. So I don't know if he talks his way out or bribes his way out. But either way, he manages to make it back to England at some point. And he's broke. He's pissed. He's got nothing left. And he's back in London just like, okay, I guess I'll go back to the place I know, which is Westminster. 
mm-hmm. uh, where all my monk and cl- clerk friends are hanging out and getting drunk. Getting drunk. And it's still a, in just a den of iniquity. Everyone's just okay. having so much fun. He's kind of like moping around one day, walking through the cemetery. He's just like you. I think moping it was really around hard. in the cemetery. <laughs> Not. <laughs> You're right. I have had a lot of run-ins with cemeteries. I don't. I don't know if I'd call them run-ins. I'd call them you seeking I them out. I got locked in one. Oh yeah, I did seek that one out, and then they shut the gates, and I was locked in there for three hours. Uh, hopped the fence, almost ripped a hole in my pants. Okay, so uh, I wrote that le- Dick was left up a creek that I never finished the sentence. <laughs> so. <laughs> So Dickie was back in London, completely broke and broken spirited. <laughs> so you can only imagine you can only imagine how like ferociously angry he was at the king. So he's walking around Westminster being mopey, and he kind of glances over and he sees a ladder that's up against a window. And he's like, That's okay. weird. I used to work in here. Those windows are usually like shut and locked. But of course the king's gone, so nobody cares. And everyone's drunk. So Chaos. no one's no one's <laughs> and everyone's keeping drunk. watch. And he's like, that's super unsafe because there's, like, treasure in there. He's like, well, okay, I have nothing to lose, so I'm just going to go check that out, see what's going on in there. And if they catch me, then I can just say, hey, you know me. I used to work here. Yeah. And so he climbs up this ladder, and he realizes that the window is just being held shut by a string. And he's oh, like, no. guys, I mean, look, you're ask- this is asking for it, right? I need money. And so he opens they it up. They wanted me to rob them. It's like they, they set us up. Well, he was so down on his luck that he was like, look, I know what's in here. There's a couple of silver pieces. There's some some good stuff. And so he opens the window and he's like, there's nobody in here. It was completely deserted. None of the monks were there. They were drunk somewhere. And he sees this silver platter. And he's like, ooh, why not? You know? That's no one's one. going to miss it. No one's going to miss it. They're and not going to notice for like no six months. Yeah. And he's kind of seized by this like YOLO attitude of like, well, <laughs> look, I don't have anything left. I'm going to take that platter. So he he just straight up climbs in, takes the platter and some other silver, puts it under his arm, and then just climbs out and walks away in broad daylight. I and like that. Did he find out who the ladder like the ladder was just there? Was somebody in there no before idea. him? He doesn't know. He was just like, well, there's a ladder up against this. Anyway, he, so he steals this and he's like, that felt good. Because he was able... <laughs> he's like, I like this. That felt good. That felt great. Uh Dick felt great. Um, so he, he, I'm sorry, just kill me. Uh, so he fences it. He goes and fences it to somebody and sells it and he gets money. And he's like, oh, this is awesome. And he, so he's going to the pubs and he's drinking and he's like, I could do this again. And he starts to kind of think like, but where? He got greedy. He, well, he did. Because he, mm-hmm. again, remember, he's angry at the king and he thinks the king took all of his treasures up to Scotland with him. So I couldn't steal his. Except... He remembers that the king is an idiot and is, <laughs> is scared of God to the point where he keeps a lot of his personal jewelry and treasures in Westminster Abbey. He remembers because he used to work there. And he's like, there's a whole crypt underneath that abbey filled with treasure. And it's the yeah. personal treasure. It's the personal treasure of King Edward. And Edward took all the stuff to pay for the war, but he left behind like swords and like relics, like religious relics, like mm-hmm. uh, gold crowns. Pretty much the crown jewels. Everything was down there. And it was just guarded by drunk monks. And and, and Richard D- Dick was like, all right, okay. I think I have a plan. Yeah. And so he decided that he would steal whatever the king had left behind in his treasury. And he got away with it before, so why not? The king's not here. He realized he couldn't do it alone. He needed right, a right. crew. He needed a crew. <gasps> And that's where I'm going to pick up next week. No! <laughs> Sorry. My you first two part. You did what I did. I love it. I know. So we'll Nicely pick up done. with uh, Thank you. So it's a big story, and I, I felt like it wasn't fair to cram it into one. So, I love it. Uh, next week, we're going to learn all about the heist yes. of the, the the crown jewels in 13. Yes. Very by good. By our buddy Dick. Anyway. Buddy Dick trying to go in to steal the Declaration of Independence, mm-hmm. or t- or the Taco Bell that's kept in there. The ta- mm-hmm. they're going to go steal the Taco Bell paintings from the king's wardrobe, and also his uh, Trader Joe's tote bags filled with his Trader Joe's tote bags with money, clothes, yeah, his but picks. money. Anyway, Nicely done. So, yeah, that's part one, and you know, very good. Thanks. That's why you wanted to go second. Yes, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, two parter. Yeah. 
I know. This is my, this is my first two parter. I do usually do don't do them. It feels good. I, I kind of yeah. like that. I like this. Yeah. Now I, I can like really because right. I found I found his confession, and I really wanted to read the whole thing, and so now I'm, I have time to do that. So nice. Anyway, uh, yeah. I usually that's just end up doing a two parter because I just do wait. I overdo it, and then I'm like, oh shit, I have to split it now. Not because oh, I ever want to do a two parter. Hundred percent. Hundred percent overdid it last night. I was panicking, and Sean's like, just do a two parter, and I was like, oh yeah. Yeah, you're allowed. All right. You could do a three parter. No, <laughs> maybe maybe later. Are we gonna close we'll these see. tabs? Yeah. All right. What are you thinking for uh, sound effects? Let's see. A bell. Uh, getting crushed by a bell. <laughs> oh, yeah. Clearly. Yeah. A Taco the Bell. Boom. Living moss. Don. Like in, on like Shrek's in head. The movie Coco. <laughs> you know, when the or guy Shrek's gets killed by Or a like bell. a bell falling onto Shrek's head. Oh, yeah. What will Shrek say? The sound of him hitting a taco Shrek against the bell Scottish. as he's trying to eat. Right. <laughs> Shrek oh. was busy fighting King Edward, Edward Longshanks, which is why yeah. he was not able to help out. Uh, yeah. I do like the idea of Shrek being digitally incorporated into Braveheart now, uh, yeah, but oh, that's a story for I another would love day. That. Yeah, I bet you someone's they, already done that. A bell hitting. They Shrek. may take oh, our sure. swamps, but they'll never take our freedom. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, a Scottish Shrek. bell. I love it. I don't know right, what to do. I don't. Yeah, sure. I just I think we'll just we should just ring the bell again, Alyssa. If you think of something better, just do it because okay. we don't know. We don't know. Just a bell dropping and smash smashing these tabs. Okay, ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Oh. Boom. Oh, I gotta Dung. close this one too. Oh no, that's the notes. Uh, I can't close Lord. all of mine because there's more. Because oh, right, you week. have another thing coming. I have a yeah. bunch. I have to keep closing. I have multiple <laughs> windows. <laughs> okay, now um, they're all gone. Screw you, tabs. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you for that. That was great. I'm really excited for the next part. Um, speaking of the next part, let's move on to listener emails. Yeah. You go first. Um, I will go first. Our first email is from Lydia from the country of Texas. Oh, yeah. It, it was a country at one point. It was a country, yeah. Hi, Hannah and Kava. This is Lydia, listener and new Patreon subscriber. Oh, By the way, we have a new hey. Patreon. Go ahead and subscribe, much like Lydia did. Thank you, Lydia. Thanks, Currently Lydia. in Texas. Parentheses, unfortunately. Uh, I'm sorry nah. that uh, you don't want to be in Texas. Texas is a fine state. It's got some cool places, some nice people who are very got polite. Got guns, yeah. They got guns. We got guns everywhere in America, though, unfortunately. I don't know. Um, uh, yeah, right. Anyway, Lydia goes on to say, I don't keep tabs open in my browsers, but I do have a moderate backlog of podcast episodes, which is why I just listened to the racist alien time capsules this morning, which is episode <laughs> uh, 10? Uh, 11? something. We should probably oh. know what that is. I'm no. going to keep singing this song as we look up the numbers of oh, the episodes. Like, I can look it up. Yes, please do. So we, we got to cross right. promote our own thing. Hold on, uh, hold on. Racist Alien Time Capsules is, yeah, uh, episode 15. Okay, so that's e episode 15. Hannah's slip of preparing bog bodies towards the end of the episode reminded me of the history of eating Egyptian <laughs> mummies, which persisted oh. into the early 1900s. Do you know about this? Yes. This is... All right. This is gross. <laughs> Speaking of this English great. people doing insane things. Funny <laughs> enough, the history starts in ancient Persia, where oh, the mineral bitumen, which is basically naturally occurring asphalt was used medicinally oh guys used Fun to eat note. asphalt <laughs> apparently yeah we still do it's delicious it's part of our culture i think that's uh, fun just you <laughs> yeah <laughs> you gotta take food where you can find it fun <laughs> side note the greeks translated this into pitch referring to the viscous sticky nature of the mineral and asphalt oh. and called it piss asphalt <laughs> <laughs> amazing through a number of misunderstandings a bitumen was used in the Egyptian mummification process and mistranslation from the Persian word for the substance, mumia. 12th century medieval Europeans started what? using actual mummies as medicine. Oh. <laughs> mummy ha. Mummy ha. Mummy ha. Madan. Mummy ha. Eat the mummies. Eat the, is that what you just said? Eat the mummies. Yeah, kharijis. I'm just like, white people, eat the mummies. Kharijis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Love what did it. I say for the, yeah, surprisingly, this actually fit into a larger practice of medical cannibalism that was already established in Europe and other cultures oh. as well. The blood, <laughs> hair, bones, etc., of executed prisoners, for example, was thought to cure all sorts of ailments. I assume our boy 
Dick Puddlecock was also part of this. Well, as he was getting yeah. skinned, somebody probably ate him. Skin uh, alive. There's an quote unquote internet fact myth that Egypt uh, has run out of mummies due to Victorians eating so many as medicine. Yeah. This is based on the actual history of mummies as medicine combined with Victorian Egyptomania, where mm -hmm. in Egyptian history obsessed Victorians did a lot of disgraceful things to mummies, such <laughs> as turning them into paint and fertilizer, unwrapping parties, and the usual stealing yep. artifacts for museums. However, Dr. Sarah Parkak, an Egyptologist and author, says in a Twitter thread, mummies are not rare because people ate them. A, mummies are found all the time, and B, mummies were used for paint. And then there's a whole long thread that I did not have personally time to read to prepare for yeah. this, but we will link to it and you can look through it. There's a bunch of stuff that looks like it's pretty official. Love learning all the random stuff and hearing you guys have so much fun on this podcast. Cheers, Lydia. Thank you, Lydia. Thanks, Lydia. Yeah, the, the mummy, I knew that they made paint too. Like there's a certain color of paint that you can't really get anymore because you can't, you know. Eat mummies? You can't grind up mummies anymore legally. <laughs> because of uh, woke? Because of what? <laughs> Can you believe that? They don't want us to do anything anymore. <laughs> Suddenly I have to have like respect for the dead and like Ooh. sanctity for culture, whatever. Dead bodies can't be ground <laughs> up and used into medicine. In, Thanks in a lot. my beautiful paint and put in yeah. my mouth. Anyway, gross. Um, <laughs> so yeah, they would like make these these, these unwrapping parties. A bunch of like dumb Victorians would be like, "Come over, we're all gonna just unwrap this mummy together and see what's in there." Anyway, a body. <laughs> it's a it's a you guys you guys it's a body. It always is. It's uh, never not. I love I love that this starts because people didn't take the time to translate Farsi, and then they end up <laughs> eating mummies. This is my favorite. <laughs> Idiots. That's true. And then it's the Greeks, the ancient Greeks. Ancient Greeks. There. Way to go, ancient Greeks. Let's all continue worshiping them and not the Persians, because they certainly didn't invent democracy. And oh, no. Uh, that was the, that was all... the Roman. I'm yeah, just kidding. Yeah, we didn't the do Romans it. Romans stole yeah. everything. The Persians did nothing. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to get angry now. You that should move on to the two, second email. That grudge yeah. is 2,000 years old. And I love it. That doesn't it doesn't stop. It is, it will not, it I'm going to put fire. this into my children, and they're going to also oh, be yeah. angry about it. Good, as they we'll should We'll never be. let it go. My email is from Nikki from Indiana. Hi, Hello, Anna Nikki. and Kave. Loving having found a podcast that is just a manifestation of what hyperfixation feels like. <laughs> glad to help. Uh, well, I'm glad to find people whose brains work the same way as mine. For my tab, I wanted to share... <laughs> Which is to say, don't work. It doesn't... They don't work, yeah. Yeah, they don't work. It, they get stuck on one little topic, <laughs> and then they follow that topic until it's... You, they can't until they're reading a manuscript from 900 AD. Um, for my tab, I wanted to share one that I originally saw as a meme and thought it was just someone trolling. Then years later, I came across the Wikipedia page while doing a completely unrelated search. Apparently, okay. back in the late 1700s, there was a racehorse named what looks like Potu. It's P O T O O O O O O O O O. The story goes back. The story goes that the stable boy, who wasn't literate, heard someone say that his name was Potato, and thought <laughs> that it was Pot with eight O's, <laughs> and so he wrote it down that way. That's really the only interesting thing about him. But I just enjoy that in some ways our humor never changes, even when yeah. we're centu centuries apart. Here's the tab's link, and it's wikipedia.org slash Potu. <laughs> potu. Pot, pot, pot eight O. Pot thanks, again for all, thanks again for all the laughs, and I hope this horse's name can bring a chuckle to you as well. Kind regards, Nikki. That's like <laughs> thanks, a uh, that's like a old timey dad joke almost. Yeah, a hundred percent. That's amazing. I love that. Plus, Potato. you can't like name a horse the same thing as same name as another horse. They were always like, I don't know, let's make up a new name. That's why they're always called like Jetpack Dishwasher <laughs> stuff <Jet> like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I'm fun putting fact, all my money on jetpack. Jetpack's what? dishwasher. I was gonna say <laughs> our friend Michelle, who submitted the or who who we exchanged hands and I got the Taco Bell tab. Yeah. Uh, when we were on, we were all playing um, Animal Crossing. Her handle for some reason was Potato because she just loved potatoes. I guess. They're good. So I always and we knew multiple Michelles in our friend group. So we always just like whenever Sarah will be like Michelle's coming and I'm like, are you talking about Potato? So so shout <laughs> potato out Michelle to Michelle or other Michelle. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is it Potato yeah. Michelle or is it real? Is it the other Michelle? Uh, anyway, like so it all comes back. I know so many Sarahs that it's at the point where Sean's like, which Sarah is this? And I use her right. screen name. Yeah, you guys. <laughs> it's like it's this one. <laughs> 
It's jet, it's jetpack dishwasher, Sarah. <laughs> Anyway, thank you, Nikki. Nikki, right uh, for your submission. If you guys have an email that you'd like us, <laughs> you're just thinking about potato or a dishwasher jetpacks now. Jetpack, jetpack dishwasher, and it being a horse. Nikola Jokic would love it. Uh, what a dumb horse. No such thing. Um. Anyway, send us your t- emails to 500 open tabs yeah. at gmail.com. That's 500 open tabs. Give us a brief mm-hmm. explanation about what your tabs about. Include the link and let us know where you're from. And as another option, if you're so inclined, you can also send us a little voice memo, like keep it under a minute, a minute, keep it under a minute. I'm just at the point of the end of the episode uh-huh. where my mouth no longer works. Uh-huh. It's tough doing a podcast, tougher than you'd think. You, you'd keep, think, yeah. Yeah. It's keep tiring. it under one minute, please. Or just and be like me and say minute, minute. Minute, yeah. And, and minute. minute. That's another minute. thing we do. We, we drop the T at the end of the word, minute. 500 open abs. At uh, gmail.com. Anyway, why don't you tell us, why don't you tell everybody where to find us? Yeah, we can, we're 500 open tabs on Instagram and Twitter and, um, Discord. And I'm, you need to find the oh, Discord. Discord. Yeah. Uh, Follow us we'll on link the Discord. To the Discord and Patreon, of course. And we're then also on YouTube, little... very importantly. Oh, duh. If you want to watch us and watch me show the little clay thing and all the pictures, uh, follow us on YouTube. It's really fun there. And, um, Patreon. I said it at the top of the episode. I'll say it again. I know. We're going to say it again. Patreon. We got to just keep Patreon. it. Patreon, Patreon, Patreon. We are so grateful for those who have already become patrons because this is a lot of work, it turns out. It's so <laughs> turns much out. work. It's so much work. So much work. And and it's 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 been really great to have some a uh, little bit of support that way. So you can find me at Hannah Hillam on everything and Kava. You can find me at uh firm of friends on instagram it's basically all i, I yeah. that's basically the only place i am now uh, i do a little bit on blue sky but that's just covetarian um additionally we will be at san diego comic-con we are going to be in artist B1. alley one uh at the time of this release i think if we have to cut it we'll cut it if we're not allowed to say it but we do have a panel we do uh that is going to be on saturday at 1 p.m which is july 24th so july 24th i believe it's room 28 de Uh we're putting together an avengers style panel of the greatest people that we know who we haven't confirmed yet so we don't even know who's going to be on it but we'll see (laughs) we'll see just because we're announcing this or we recorded this before it actually uh confirmed but yeah it's going to be about um uh trying to build what do we call it we're calling it uh, escaping Escaping the algorithm the algorithm yeah it's, we're going to discuss ways to build community outside of the big platforms um, because it seems to be a trend that everyone's thankfully following. We're all kind of sick of it. We're all looking for mm-hmm. places to share interests and, and not have some other, you know, yeah. algorithm dictate what we see and what we don't see. Right. Uh, and that's proven to be a little bit difficult. So we want to get everybody together in one space to have conversations about it, talk to other artists, talk to other authors and people and and talk to them about some of the methods that they've had uh, success in doing that. So if you're going to be in San Diego Comic-Con, please, please, please come uh, to this panel Saturday, 1 1 p.m. Room 28 DE. It's called Escaping the Algorithm. Hannah and I are going to be hosting it. It's going to be a mess from our Mm -hmm. end, but the other people will be great. (laughs) Yeah. We're going to look, we're going to pull it together like we do this every week. Oh, no. Oh, no. Right. That's what I mean. A mess. (laughs) I'm a mess until I start talking. I'm like, I guess I'm doing this story. Yep. Anyway. Anyway, we'll have more and more information about that uh, as we come closer to the date. But yes. Oh, our table is BB01. So and if you BB02. Want to come to our table. Yeah. Oh, right yeah. in the corner. Right, right next to the tower of T shirts. I have to say it like that every time. Assuming it'll still be there this year. You never, you never know. It's been Let's there for the past like four years. But Yeah, it's there. <clears throat> don't climb it again this year. That was a bad idea, like oh. King Kong. I look, look, I needed to put somewhere to cry where no one could see me. <laughs> what? Every Comic-Con. Okay. Thank you guys okay. for listening. Until the next time, keep it Josie. Keep it Josie.